welcome to Just Shops and Podcast with David and myself today. We have two of the guys from D Ream, Peter Kanna and Alan McKenzie. How are you doing, lads? Marvellous, thank you. Hello. Really good, thank you. Hello, hello. Hello. So what's been happening? Are you, you got a new single out called I Used to Believe in Love and a new album out called Open Hearts, Open Minds? You have indeed. How's that going? It's right behind him there. A shameless self-promotion going on there. That's great. We love it. Must it. be a green screen, is it? It is a green screen, yes. And I don't have a large, huge album in my in my bedroom. <laughs> Although, <laughs> now, now I think about it, I can get that done. I'm, I'm all for all the PR I am. That's all I do. My constant life is PR in this album. And, well, the single is just another another extension of the PR for the album, obviously. So Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's a constant hard work. Well, have you got a day job, then? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, 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 look, I'm, I'm still lucky enough to be able to live on my royalties and I've made some financial moves to make sure that I don't have to prostrate myself artistically. And Alan's similarly busy enough with his DJ work and his other label activities. So between the pair of us, we've got a little bit of a buffer zone, but this can't go on forever. Um, you know, the live industry was first thrown under the bus and it looks like we're still even the last in. But uh, we've got a little bit of leeway yet before the uh, yeah, before we're getting... Uh, I don't know. I quite fancy being a, a HGV driver. I think that's my next job. That's a definite. Uh, that's a definite way to go, isn't it? In the that's UK. the way to go. Yeah. Well, I, I heard the day they were starting to pay seventy grand a year. Is that right? Something like that. Yeah. That's and all the and all the Yorkie bars you can handle. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I can't believe it. Seventy grand a year for fucking HGV. I think, I think that's yeah. a myth. Uh, I think it's a, a myth. Just fucking taking the pith. I think. <laughs> yeah that's if you work like you know 80 hours and you're not allowed to work 80 hours but you've got a you've got that what's called a tachometer isn't it yeah. Yeah. Telegraph. Yeah. The tach, yeah you have to live but you always see them bless them pulled in on the side of the road where they've got as far as they could before they had to switch it off but yeah that looks it looks like a harsh life you're away for a long a fair long time away from your family and everything and i'm not sure it's What's that, mate? That might suit you, Alan. <laughs> get him out of his, get him out of his chair anyway. Well, only into another chair, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> get, get him, get him on another high horse. <laughs> That's you, young man. <laughs> so, what's happening, then, guys? I used to believe in love and open hearts, open minds. I mean, when did you guys break up? Twenty years ago. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, equally I longer than that. 94, but 94, wasn't it? We, yeah. we started up and then we um, we had a few years off in about 2009 or 8. We met in 2008, yeah. yeah. Uh, we had a sort of meeting somewhere in a park. It's a long, long story that involves someone being up far too late and someone getting up far too early. Past, <laughs> past, past joining, past yeah. joining, looking at each other saying, what the hell are you doing here? We, we yeah. went one way, one gone the other. I'd just gone too far. Well, you can guess which one went the wrong way. Obviously, <laughs> what, what's the right way? Who knows? Yeah, yeah. yeah well, you never know, do yeah. you? Well, Alan, you're you're wearing black, and I'm wearing white, and that's that's very telling. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, you you, you know th those little voices you got on each shoulder, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> like me and David at the moment. All right, because <laughs> <laughs> we're above you. <laughs> <laughs> so you got back together then, and then have you been making music since two thousand and eight? Yeah, or? yeah. We, we just went at it because Alan said to me, uh, first thing he said when he met me was, you shouldn't have done that second album without me. It was shite. Okay, I didn't know. And I, I oh, said, yeah, well, you had three albums. Yeah. With the benefit of, benefit of hindsight, it wasn't that great. And, and he said, well, let's do another one. And so we did. We did uh, in 2010. Uh, we released In Memory Of. Um, again, um, we just sort of experimenting, using a lot of guitars and stuff because I've got a guitar background. But um, And then... We, you know, life got in the way. I, I got divorced. I moved out. All this, all the stuff that happens, you know. Yeah. And um, and uh, by 2015, we were getting itchy feet again, and we got into the studio and began the process of what wound wound up to be this this album, this offering. Okay. Uh, the first track we worked on for way too long was called Maybe at Midnight," and that we worked on that nearly, I think, nearly six years, Alan. And it was it was on and off. Let's be honest. Yeah. yeah. It was solid. It was um. Yeah. We did leave it for a while yeah. and kind of got back on it again. I know you were. I think you get up to momentum with these things because it, you know it's hard. 
Um, we don't have day jobs per se, but we, you know, life's, life's busy, complicated. I'm running a lot of different things. And when we could meet up to do our thing, we, we got, we got busy with it. And I think the, the product like, it speaks for itself. We got, um, product, listen to that. I mean, the album speaks for itself. We got lucky with used to believe in love because it's just such a strange idea. It's, it's about, it's hard to write something that's upbeat when you get to your mid fifties and you can be quite cynical, which we are, but also we're quite hopeful and it's hard to find the, the right angle. And I used to believe in love's sort of points towards that, you know, points towards our past, but points towards hope for the future. And um, it's, I think it's one of the finest cuts from the album. And the album itself was going to be called Hope For You, but we decided that was had all the charm of an acrostic poem in the end. And, um, and Alan pointed that, those lines out of another one called Look At The Sky, Look At The Stars Now, Mama. And, and so we went with that because it just seemed to be uh, an antithesis to what's going on right now. So at some point that out to is just recently, Alan, did you remember they said, uh, how come you guys appear every time there's like, it's the end of the world? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, like coming up with things going to be better yeah, um, after, yeah. after the, you know, the 90s and the Tories and, and then getting labour in and all the rest of it. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what cycle we're on, but we're certainly not on the, um, on the treadmill with the majors doing, you know, knocking them out. And uh, these things are considered. Also, Alan, do you remember we decided to do this just for our sanity during lockdown? Because, yeah, it just it's just a place that makes sense, really. It's a place for creatives to make sense. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. we've spoken to a few bands and a lot of them have been really creative in the lockdown period, you know. That's right, yeah. And obviously, a lot of them have fallen by the wayside also. But, I mean, mm. I think those that have got the passion are, are actually shining through. So, yeah, well... I think as well where Peter lives, as you can see in the background, there's quite an idyllic setting. It's beautiful, isn't it? I, I live right in the country, right in the middle, on literally on Cabot Chase. It is the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's the middle of nowhere, but it's got some neighbours there. I mean, we've got a few neighbours that don't actually get on with them, so that's. Mm -hmm. uh, but we, it's, and I was I was going mental. I literally was going mental after about eight months of it because I don't even have a path to walk. You know, up, well, what my path? Look what I was doing there, Peter. Hey. <laughs> I don't know, I have a path, but, but no proper pavements where I live. So just getting out is just an absolute nightmare. You need your car. Mm. And then after eight months of that, just, mm. well, as I used to call it, hunkercising. And just you know, trying to get fit, then getting injured, and then lying in bed for about three weeks afterwards in pain. Mm. So yeah, yeah. The idea to get over to Peter's idyllic setting in Ireland to you know, work my mind a bit and, and get some music therapy. It's what, it's which is what we did for the album, really. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I've never got up so early in my life. I've gone to bed so early for many years. I was in bed at like half past nine, just enough, half six or seven. Yeah, yeah. Idiots. Idiots. Yeah. Well, like, that, that's, that's partly my fault because that's the kind of schedule I keep these days. And I like having my evenings and to wind down. And I really think it helps with the creative juices because I've always wanted to do that. But back in the day, everyone would turn up at the studio at like one or two o'clock and then they would leave till 6 a.m. And I'm sorry, but you know, you do that three or four days in a row, you're like, I, I become a shell of a man, and but so Alan's. I think he's a proper night owl. I think he's never, but I'm up. I'm up with the up with the larks, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was we talking? We were talking to somebody, and they said that if, if you go to bed on an idea, it, it develops more in your in your in your yeah. psyche when you're asleep, and then when you wake up, you're like, "Woo, I'm uh, yeah, I'm raring to go," you know. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I, I keep my Walkman. The, well, I say Walkman. I show my age, aren't I? You got these. <laughs> Got these smartphones now, and and they're really easy to record things on. The trick is not to go to the toilet and have an idea at three a.m. because yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, that, <laughs> that'll ruin your whole evening's sleep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should prostrate playing that probably. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I might have a feel tonight. See how I get on. <laughs> Boys, you got to check them. You know. <laughs> yeah, you definitely got to. Yeah. <laughs> well, they do it the easy way now. They do it all through blood tests. So. Ah, uh, that's uh, so. No, listen. I need the excuse. Next time she catches me, I'm just checking them, baby. <laughs> We had, we had this conversation the other week, didn't we, Ted? Because I, I turned 50 next year. And I, yeah, I think yeah. that was when they started, you know, probing. Yeah. But I'm going to miss out on that, I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no no more marigolds for you, my man. <laughs> no, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Cough. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> What? <laughs> so is Brian Cox coming back to play you? When you do your live shows? Um, I speak to Brian all the time. I haven't, uh, to be fair, I haven't spoken to him in a few months now since I did my own little radio show here 
in Northern Ireland. But um, he's in good form. He's got a, a world tour coming up starting. I think he's already started, if I'm not mistaken. So he's, you know, he's, he's really on one. So the, the, the simple fact is we can't afford him. Um, oh, yeah. So, uh, but if he, if he did have the time and we were doing somewhere like Manchester um, or something that was convenient enough for him, I'm sure he'd come down and, and join us on stage. But Brian's in, you know, he's in the stratosphere now. He's, uh, yeah, yeah. but he, you know, he deserves it. I mean, I, I fully support everything Brian's done and I'm having a bad word to say about him. He's just an incredible human being. And he, he's doing what well, his favorite, his, um, his hero is Carl Sagan. Do you remember him from the seventies, mm. Carl Sagan? He's the guy that was kind of like the poster boy for science back then. Okay. Um, and uh, he walked around and um, he was sort of introducing basically the masses around the time of tomorrow's world and that kind of stuff. All right. And that, that all kind of went into Brian. And not only did he get the degree, but he started, I, I say I take a little bit of credit for this because he, he started explaining on the tour coach very, very complicated things to very simple people like me. And uh, so he, he seems to think that, well, he does, he does allow me that, you know? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, because um, that's just one of the parts of the jigsaw. So no, we'd love to see him. He, he did do a bit on on the last album, didn't he, Al? Uh, he, did, he came he in over dubs, didn't he, on about three tracks? Yeah. yeah. So oh, we, right, okay. We try and we didn't get him in for this album because well, we couldn't. Lock down, anyway. we couldn't lock down, yeah. Just then we wanted to do it ourselves anyway, didn't we? Really? Did it? Thought mm. it. I think we will be getting him in for a gig at some stage. You know, when we get with that Wembley Stadium gig. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bound yeah. to happen. Yeah, that'd be nice to see you all together again, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got some, we had some good players go through our band. Simon Ellis, he went on to support. Uh, he on, he went on to write uh, "Don't Stop Moving" for S Club, but he also um, he MD'd the Spice Girls, Belinda Carlisle. Uh, he, he, he's seventeen. He was a busy boy, you know, and he, mm. he still does. Uh, I think Westlife even to this day. So, all oh, right, you okay. know, he, he's busy. Um, we had Mark Roberts who went on to do Panic Music. Um, who else I'm trying to think? Um, Brian, you know, it was just it was quite a busy little um, turnstile that people had there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. I mean, all these like small, smaller. I can't say small, but smaller type of um, electronic or whatever bands, really guitar bands and stuff. Mm -hmm. They all seem to have a little circle of musicians, and they all sort of revolve around each other. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, it's, it's quite cool, man. It, it's good, it's healthy. I mean, if you get on with people, then that's half the battle. And secondly, if they've got a talent and ability, why would you look anywhere else? I mean, yeah, it's just good to nurture those relations. And we yeah, did a fair amount of that on this album. We were getting TJ, um, TJ Davis are, started off as a backing singer. She feels like a member of the band now, but she does all of those incredible stacked female vocals. And Derek Chai is still playing bass with us, um, although he did. It's not me this time. <laughs> Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Keep talking, Al. Oh, well, well, he was saying Derek Chai, who I don't know what he was going to say there, but he's still playing bass on us, definitely. He does a bit of backing vocals as well. Yeah. Will Purnell, who is, I don't know if you know, Jack Purnell, the famous old drummer, who was... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. His son, Will. Okay. remotely on this one. Um, and he's in a crowd, just going on to do Panic Music, and he, he's proper... And, oh, oh yeah. Oh, he's come back with glasses on. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Oh, you do I, that? That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hand it over to my brother. <laughs> I can't see the thing and it's there. So, but I can see you when I'm sitting here. There you go. I'm age appropriate. I'm I'm 55 now, so I've just started wearing glasses in the last few years, and I hate it. I really hate it. Yeah, do you only wearing them lasered. Do you only wear them? Yeah. Reading, and, Right, and operating the equipment, you know, like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's like me. I'm 55 as well, so, and I started. <laughs> I remember I was like 48 or 49, I think, and my eyes just went in a in a fucking flash. And I went it. to the optician. So I thought yeah. it was my job because at the time I was working with lasers, and I said, "Oh, I think the lasers are affecting my eyes," you know. Mm -hmm. And he's like, "How old are you?" I said, "Oh, 48." He said, "No, it's your fucking age." It was. That's natural. Yeah. Yeah. What that's kind of lasers were you doing? What was that about? Oh, it's uh, cutting, uh, steel cutting. All right, wow. So, wow, new yeah. chassis. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah, it's pretty boring. It's not, it's nothing exciting. <laughs> Use the computer to set the design and then work with steel, flat steel. It sounds yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. yeah I love it. stuff like that. All right, okay. Well, we can swap if you want. Well, no, it's, um, <laughs> when you watch, watch those things on Discovery, you know, how, how, it's, how it's made. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's just fascinating. 
It is fascinating for five minutes, you know, when you watch on the telly, but when you're <laughs> when you're doing it every day, it's not, it's right, not okay. that great. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing like being a pop star, I can tell you. Yeah, well, that's that's always good. Good evening, Wembley's is it's a great place to be. Yeah, yeah. Five minutes, but the five <laughs> minutes that lasts. <laughs> I don't like sex these days. <laughs> well, well, you're pushing it a bit there, aren't you? <laughs> oh yeah. It's a- <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm showing my stamina now, am I? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's bragging rights, that is. <laughs> oh, well, Come on. Uh, I don't know where so we are. Guys, I've, I've lost. Oh, no. guys first meet then? So I've done a, obviously done a bit of reading, and I, I know, Peter, you, you're obviously from, from Ireland, and you moved across yeah. to London with yeah. your original band at the time, and you were a guitarist for them? Yeah, I was... I was playing lead guitar and, and doing, I was basically the MD actually of this band. I, I, that's what they call it later. I was just the guy who put everything together. And um, no, I really loved it. My first band, I was 15, I think, when we started off. And by the time I was 19 or 20, I think we'd got to London mm-hmm. on the back of uh, U2, the Dublin Act U2, the, the U2 had started a homegrown label. And we were sort of label mates with people like Tuesday Blue and Hot House Flowers and, and the likes. And we came out of that little scene, that Irish scene, and they brought us to London because they wanted us to, to, to break it in England and then come back to Ireland, which I thought was nuts. But, you know, who knows the workings of record labels? But the band never survived the move, but I stayed on friends' floors. And within a couple of years, I would learned how to use the musical equipment. But I wasn't I was going to the places I was going to because I split up with that band. I, I wasn't hearing the sounds. I, I couldn't get the, the record to sound the right way. And I went to this club called The Brain in Water Street, which I heard about through friends. And they said that you'll really enjoy this place because it's full of artists, musicians, poets, DJs, graphic designers, proper lurvies, you know, wannabes. Yeah. And so I had it I had it down there on my push bike and I was I was always brassic and everyone down there would buy me a pint or, you know, a bottle of beer, you know how it was, because uh, nightclub prices were well outside my range. I was properly poor. And, and yeah, I was down there and I was like, Alan was resident at one of these nights. Um, He's running his own night, I think. Were you running your own night? Indeed, yeah. yeah. And and he was on the decks. And he, I got introduced to him in the bar. I explained to him, well, you pick it up from here. I'll, I'm, I'm, my voice is hurting. Uh, <laughs> my ex-wife was, um, Peter worked with her um, in, in a media company in London. And she uh, basically brought Peter down to the venue to come and sort of uh, say hello to me and suggest that I got in the studio. I'd, I'd been running parties for a few years, sound systems and stuff like that for, from Surrey. Way. And um, I just, I thought she thought it'd be a good idea. Well, I had no idea that Pete was being introduced to me to do music, I have to say it first. It was, I didn't mm-hmm. realise that at first. And um, so when he came to me and sort of said, oh, do you want to come round? It just seemed, just seemed like a good idea to get out to, because I lived in East London, get over to West London and see what it was all about. And go in the street and just see what was happening. I had absolutely no preconceived ideas what it was going to be about because I, I didn't have a music in me, you know. Yeah, yeah. Playing records, one thing, and but I've, I've never, you know, I, I used to be funny enough, Pete. I, can't, I couldn't play a chord and guitar now, but I used to play about four chords and guitar when I was younger at school. Yeah. But I, don't, I don't quite know how I managed, I just left it and just didn't, never got into it. I think well, I, could, I could play East Enders theme on um, on the xylophone. Very good. <laughs> There might be room in, in the, the live set for that yet, yeah, Alan. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do the drums. We're off. Yeah, we normally do. It's not a Simmons drum kit. It's me going doof, doof, doof. But, um, when, he, when we got together in the room, it was like, I just realized, I didn't realize, but um, he was playing me this, he got me to fix the drums up and make them last way longer. Than I would normally, my attention span would stretch to like 16, 32 bar sections. And I was like, why are we doing this? And he's going, well, it's not for you. It's, it's for all the DJs. So they can lock onto the beat and then play out. So when he had that knowledge and I had my ability to do that, we were kind of like two thirds of the way there. We just needed uh, decent studios and a little bit of um, sort of political wind behind us, as it were, or, or a bit of word of mouth. And that's what happened. But when we started playing these out, they were so, the, the, the mix I'm talking about, the, the song uh, that we were working on there was You're the Best Thing. Mm-hmm. And um, it just, it did its own thing. It went through the clubs. And, and uh, the next thing you know, uh, we, we'd sold 20,000 um, on import. I don't know how that works, but. 
we did a promo, didn't we? And it went out. I mean, back yeah. in the final, mm. and you know, yeah. we did about well, why like you say about twenty thousand? Who knows how many we did ultimately? Um, yeah. But um, but yeah, we could do that now. And nowadays, you're lucky to sell two hundred. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a complete. Well, at that time, was a really great time for making music. We were lucky, I think. Mm. Quite it was we were in London. It was it was happening. The club I was doing. It was right in the centre of London. It was really cool. Mm. Like as Pete said, for all these fashion people, everyone. Sean McCloskey ran this club. He used to be in boxes of old bands. A sub, a sub mm. and he was quite. He knew everyone there, and so he he just got all these people around him. And we got we were in a really nice place to do that. Yeah, it, it turns out our music was quite good, and people quite liked it. But mm. we had the real opportunity there. And much, I mean, now it's so difficult for new acts and stuff now. Whereas then, we were really lucky, and you could sit, you could get there, you could go to a record shop and take your promos down and take them off you, buy, buy a box of you, 25 of them or something off you, take them off you and sell them. Like, I, I remember being in Flying Rex and I've got in Kenston once, and I'd put things that before things to come EP we did, it was a little EP we did. I took it down there and I'd box, and Alfredo, who's like legendary Alfredo DJ from Ibiza, he was there, and I put it on literally. It's, as soon as I put it on, he had one, and then it's like I was there, and they hadn't even, they hadn't even bought the box of me. Sold it ten more, and it was just madness. In that yeah. nowadays, just it's, like, it's just it's a different world now. But we were lucky. Yeah. But you know, you make your own luck, obviously. Yeah, but, yeah. But yeah. good time to do music. I think. But that that was because the scene was just flying. You know, you had that sort of groundswell of that going on. No one knew what what it was we were doing. We were part of something. We're kind of caught up in that wave. Um, you know, looking back in it now, you, you can kind of see it for what it is. But back then, it was just there was a he hell of a lot of momentum. Just everything was just go, go, go. You know, loved it. Yeah, yeah. Because you you wrote was it ninety three? You wrote both of them, and then ninety four they really exploded, wasn't it? Or was it a bit earlier than that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That yeah, came out in ninety two, didn't it? Ninety two, ninety three. Something like that. We we had lots of different incarnations until we got it right. Uh, the biggest struggle we had on things was going to get better was the sort of size of the chorus well because i had the idea for the chorus but it didn't have the um the sound of it and uh so we, we tracked up several different locations with different backing singers and couldn't get it to sit it was just it just wasn't happening and uh and then at one time we were sitting in roundhouse the, the old jerry bronze old studio up in uh camden lock and uh I know, I know. roundhouse yeah yeah you know isn't it yeah, yes, and uh, that's they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. Um, <laughs> but the, you know, the, the Pink Floyd had recorded there all these leads up and all these great acts, and you're in this kind of it looks like the inside of uh, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 Space Oddity. That's how the it's leather paneled and wood, and it's just beautiful. And we're in there, and uh, my producer, our producer Tom Fredericks, pulled up the vocal sessions from you know, six months before, from like, you know, five months before, all these different faders, there were several. And when he ran them all up and it hit into the chorus, it was like, it was that size. It was like, oh my God, it's absolutely enormous. It, I didn't know we needed a massive gospel choir. But once <laughs> we had that, it was like, that's it. That that really does it. And and then when that, that hits on the one beat, it's just like a punch in the face in terms of a hook. And the next thing we know, it's like, it's just gone, gone like crazy for us. And that's the kind of we still have that as a calling card today. It's the thing that gets us all our gigs, and and we'd yeah. like to move on. But and that's why we're still doing new stuff, because we still feel we've got some good records in us, and we're enjoying that process. But you know, things is a great, um, as I say, a great calling card. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, it's it's great to have a you know an anthem like that, isn't it? So, you know, because me and Terry were talking about it, and like my my kids are well, they were born in the the mid to late nineties. But they knew they knew it straight away as well. So there's you know there are tracks that people know straight away. They don't always necessarily know the artist, but straight away they you know they, there's a tune that they know and they pick up immediately. Yeah, they, they call it, they call it a, like that is, is amazing. Yeah, they call it an evergreen apparently in the industry. Um, that's all it is. Is it okay? Yeah, that's what they call it. Yeah, which is great. We just got to keep watering it and um, <laughs> like that. And, and and not milking it too much. Yeah, <laughs> more. Good. That's good, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I, go on, sorry, Dave. Well, go on, I was just going to say, I've had a, I've had a listen to your, um, to your new album because you, you guys are, um, so you've produced it yourself and you distributed it yourself as well, I believe. I, um, I am running the label from my house. So there's right. a distribution right there. Yeah. I did, yeah. I, um, 
I did. I do have labels, but I've never, and I've done bits on a bit smaller scale. I've never done one like this and had all this stuff here in my house, garage, house. Well, I've got a separate house. Mm. It's a bit. There's a lot. There's a lot of stuff here, and I got the post off. Sometimes when I got the post, I have a particularly good day. Yeah, I got told off a few weeks ago for bringing too many things at once. So, but. <laughs> You know, I want those days because at the moment I'm just going in with one or two. And I, I like it when I turn up with 20 of them. It's a, we've yeah. got, we're doing it all ourselves. We don't we don't stream it. We decided this is the way forward because unless someone's going to come with a wad of cash to us and say, look, here you are. You do your album. There you are. That's made. That's covered your costs. And this, we'll do all the promotion and all that. Yeah. Unlikely. You know. That's I, the old way of doing it, isn't it? I know. It, it's, you've got to do it yourself. No point doing it by half, so we decided to do it. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we put all the money in and we've got all the stuff here, so it's yeah. all here. If anyone wants to buy it, please buy it. God, mm. I've got it empty my garage. Yeah, <laughs> is it all on CD or is it on uh cassettes, cassettes 45s? But have you got, hold on. Have you got it on vinyl as well? Yeah, yeah, it's on, it's on vinyl and CD, but oh, right, okay. if you buy the vinyl CD, you can have the band camp download. Um, but we're we're not streaming because oh it doesn't work oh oh that's you yeah. on your blue screen no oh, green screen sorry yeah. what no no that's not good no, no it's good it's basically what he's got in the background there it looks yeah, like yeah on the wall yeah um, well but it, it's physical and a lot of people are loving it the, when the fans get it through they're like they're having that kind of delight that we've all had when we're we're actually holding the music um, and it's it's the physical thing so you're reading the lyrics and you're seeing you're, you're feeling the sort of scale of it and you're putting it on and the tracks follow each other and there's five on one side and five on the other. That's, that's still important to me, you know? Yeah, yeah. When I go online and I watch my kids go online, the, the attention span they have, half of them don't even know the artists they're listening to. Mm. And um, I'd say, you know, it's just, that, look, that's their world. That's what they do. But um, we're, we're not yeah, trying but... to appeal to them. We're trying to appeal to everyone who, who experiences music the way we've done. Yeah, and, yeah. and that's why it's important for us to get it out there physically. Yeah, well, vinyl's making a bit of a resurgence, isn't it? I think... It kind of is. I think it's it's one of those um, things that's been overstated somewhat. Mm. You know, I was saying earlier on when we could do twenty thousand promos. I think the research is in a sense of people actually buying it again, but the amounts that are selling it's still a lot of it's just reissues of like old classics, like mm. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're actually that's actually what the market you know main sellers are. It's it's, it's still difficult for independents to put out, put out vinyl. Mm. CDs has been a funny one. I, I wasn't going to do them, but a few people said, let's do so. Mm. Laws like sign CDs, and they, you know, there's just been, um, it's, it's, you know, we're not talking about hundreds, of, like tens of thousands here. We're not talking mm. thousands. But uh, what, what's important is when, when people get this 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 physical thing through, we've, had, we've signed most of them. So it's almost in itself, it's like an NFT, you know? It's a, it's, it's, it, you can't copy it. Well, we, we, own, we own the rights to it, we've recorded it, we've engineered it. We produced it, we performed it, and now we're actually putting it out. So it's, it's direct contact with us. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting. The last gig we did there, we were early on live a couple of weekends ago. And um, it was quite interesting because the, 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 whole, the whole front, as far as I could see, seemed to be singing all of the songs, uh, or all of the lyrics, all of the new songs. And we did four of them on the night. And that was so heartening to, to have everyone that's into the band from Manchester to be uh, really supporting us like that and, and feeling what we're feeling. And, that's all you can ask for as an artist. I mean, you know, it's it's it, it's perfect. We do own this, and we're not. No one's interfered with it. No one said, "Oh, make it more shiny," or or go and you know go on some kids' television program and 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 then devalue it. You know, yeah, it, yeah. it's got its own inherent value now. It's coming from us. Yeah, Peter, we would yeah. go we program would, value it. Let's be would, honest. Which would, I don't know what shows there are anymore. So what CBBS? You want to go? I don't CBB? know what shows there are. Well, I'm in Holland, so I don't know. I'm gonna fuck yeah. you. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, <laughs> at least this time I'll be sober when we do them. <laughs> but you yeah. get over to mainland UK yeah, very often then, Pete? Yes, I, well, as I said, I was over there a few weekends ago. I actually, um, well, I flew over you last night. That's why we were, we didn't make it to the, the our rendezvous because I was in, um, I've been in Croatia for a week, um, just hanging out with some friends, and um, and I just think we've been robbed over here. I <laughs> when I see how beautiful these places are uh, and how well kept they are and all the rest of it. I think, um, yeah, we've got a way to go uh, in the UK, but uh, you know, they call it, they call the UK the dirty man of Europe and for very good reason. 
Yeah. So, but my, my, my two girls are still over there. So, you know, occasionally I'll get over there, but mainly people come see me now. Um, I've, I've been 30 years in London. That was more than enough. Um, yeah. And I managed to get over here to Donegal in the northwest of Ireland about four or five months before the first lockdown. So I was really happy to swerve um, that, that old thing. Um, yeah, right. And, you know, when I, when I had two kilometer walk from my house uh, in the Republic of Ireland, it's just that beach behind you there. So I yeah. could get out and, uh, and it, it, the only upside of that for, I mean, it was a terrible thing for everybody. Obviously it still is uh, an ongoing war there between the people and the government, but obviously um, what was really interesting for us as artists and selfishly speaking, um, you know, I got a lot of music done. Um, I, I, oh, sounds weird, but um, I, we could hear the birds because the, the traffic had stopped. So I didn't realize how much I love birds till I got here. So I, <laughs> apparently I'm, I'm, I've become a bit of a twitcher. All <laughs> oh, right. Okay. Well, we all love a bird now and again. Well, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. But it's age appropriate <laughs> birds, mid 50 birds. <laughs> And uh, that's the uh, politically correct language, incorrect language to call them birds anymore. Um, I don't know. Oh, I don't know about <laughs> the that. real birds feel about that, you know. Compared to <laughs> that's it. Everyone's feelings have to be taken into account here. Um, so no, it's, it's 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 an interesting it's an interesting place to be. Very um, inspiring place. We have. Um, I'm actually equidistant. Not that I'm anywhere near these people, but um, the the guy who wrote Amazing Grace was a, a slave trader captain, and he was marooned in in a town. Not, too far down the road. And the woman who want, wrote, uh, she's Presbyterian, she wrote Once in Dead Royal David City. She's in the church another five mi miles up there. We even had Phil Coulter here. He wrote for um, Elvis and uh, the Bay City Rollers. He he wrote Bye Bye Baby. He's uh, about five minutes that way. It's just like this whole, it's full of like artisans, guitar makers, uh, you know. In fact, the, the artwork that's behind Alan is done by my neighbor, Sinead Gormley Jackson. She she came up with this canvas uh, concept for us. And, and so it's a lovely, for me, a lovely place to be. It's almost like, um, Alan, it's nearly like the brain club, but on a kind of mm. spread out scale. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was only wondering about gigs. I was all... <laughs> okay, yeah. if you go back for gigs, you know. Yeah, he will. Oh, yeah. He's got da choice. David might be able to get you one. <laughs> that's a bit of a small venue, but that's why that's why when um, we spoke yesterday, Alan, quickly, I, I know you've got a, a festival coming up a week Friday, haven't you? Yes, Manchester. Um, yeah, on the 8th of October. Um, and that looks pretty cool as well. So there's a lot of, you know, all the, it's a night, I guess it's a 90s artist gig then, like a 90s revival gig. That is what it was. I think the festival, when it was first on, was two years ago. And um, it had Friday and Saturday. And they had the rock, and it was a bit more mixed because when we initially did, we were doing with the blow monkeys and stuff. And what's happened is, because the dates and the time of year, they split it into two different weeks. So this Saturday is the Saturday one, and next Friday is the Friday one. This Saturday is just full of bands, live bands. So it's um, it's a weird concept, and it's and it's changed it around and it's got all these '90s sort of dance acts on, you know, of different levels. I must admit, I'll be honest with you. When we were playing with the blow monkeys and stuff at first, I was much happier. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to, I would never um, um, slag off other bands or other acts, let's say, but yeah. I, I, w I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be going to see any of them apart from us. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are you doing then? You're not playing with a band? Are you playing with like a backing track? Or? We'll, we'll have backing track and live vocals only yeah, for this yeah. because um, it's the cost of getting our, our live band together uh, when we're on different continents is, is, is impossible. We have plans. We, we were, this year we were supposed to be doing a 30-day live tour so I've got um, every confidence when we when we get um, a bit more uh, together now and know what's happening next year that we'll put together there'll be more introducing of live players of so percussion and and possibly guitar and what have you. So as we go along, Mark but, say again, we have a Mark or drummer, won't we? It'll all be done proper. It's just we've had to, we had to fulfil commitments basically at the end of this year, and it and the way it's worked, yeah. like three and they're all spread out. We can't we can't do a live act with, with that, you know. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. If the costs, you know, are just phenomenal. Yeah. So we need we need to have like a 10, 10 to fifteen dates in a row to make it cost effective, yeah. and then we don't mind touring because that we won't make Alan and I don't make anything, but we make money on the 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 PAs like these things. They're they're good for us. They're keeping us some um, keeping the wolves from the door, you know. But we yeah, just have yeah. to go we have to go in and out and, and do everything to backing tracks, but live vocals. I mean, it's as good as we can get at the minute. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess you've got plenty of merch. 
<laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I don't know how it works, but we haven't got um, even anyone spare to go around the crowd and stuff like that. So I don't know. Alan, that's, that's oh, your... Yeah. Exactly. I'll, I'll just I'll run off stage and like just start chucking CDs out of people and taking the money off them. Well, no, <laughs> maybe we could get a, one of those money boxes and while I'm singing things feeling better, we just walk around the front and yeah. just sell sell stuff to them directly. I was... Um... I was I used to I'd run these I'd run these parties and I, I had that one we were doing a party with DJs from um, Mark Seven he's well, from Sweden he's you know and we had we weren't charging on the door so we had this big plan to go do exactly that with a hat to get <laughs> the DJ afterwards because we've got to cut the bar and everything but it wasn't and then um, we all got so drunk my partner and I got so drunk completely forgot to do it and then <laughs> that, like a great night really like the real life. <laughs> you forgot to do it money <laughs> off everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That is so, Alan. The band, not sure it's a great idea. Not with me in charge, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> a bit less now. Yeah. All right, then, guys. So, it's, so it's next year, you think the guys will be putting the tour together then, is it? Pretty much, yeah. That's the As band, yeah. Yeah. Once we've got the band yeah. rehearsed, but well, that's the yeah. thing, it's rehearsed, we can, we can move on with it. But with, with all lockdown, that's been absolutely impossible to, to, to try and arrange anything like that. It's just not... You know, it's, it's fine if you all live near each other and you can just, you know, mm. we, we are. It's not, we have to take the time up. Pete has to come over to the UK. PG's from Brighton. I mean, the rest from, D Derek's moved, where's Derek moved to Peter? He's Folkestone. Um, yeah, something like that, yeah. Alan's in, uh, um, Mark's in London. So. Well, where's I'll, your festival gig then? Hmm? Sunderland. Sunderland, yeah. Oh, that's a fair yeah. way away from Wales, isn't it? Yeah, I've got to fly into Newcastle and make my way across from there. Alan might pick me up if he, if he feels sorry for me. But uh, he's got a problem getting fuel at the minute, haven't you, Al? I've got some today. I've got £30 worth today. Oh, it's all limited, is it? Yeah. yeah. That's the first time in five days I've been able to get... Well, I got one yesterday, but I, was, I went there today, had none. And I found my, I went shopping, there was one there. I just, it's an absolute nightmare, because I, I, my son's in Wales. So I have to... Well, Chester, and it's, I go to try and see him each weekend. But yeah. I did last weekend and took my car to... Um, to into the red, and I spent the rest of the week just trying to find fuel. And yes, wow. it's just I mean, my car guzzles fuel, so it's just a uh, wow. Well, yeah. Chester's not too far from you, is it, Dave? Oh, miles away, it's not it's, that far, uh, is it? Yeah, North Wales, isn't it? It's um, it's a fair oh, track. Oh, it's in North Wales, is it? Yeah, it's a couple of hours. Oh, check the store, I was thinking of. Yeah, it's jump right. jump on the M5 and up on the M6, I think, isn't it? Something like that, right. Yeah, you're not. That means I mean, obviously you're in Holland, but uh, so yeah. you're not going to come see us then. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. I haven't even got a passport at the moment. All right, okay. <laughs> me. I'm still waiting for my passport to come through because uh, it ran right. out and um, I didn't send off for it in time, and now I've had to go through the whole process of applying for a new one. Right. Can you Quite get off. a Dutch one? Um, not at the moment. I can no. if mm. I renounce my my Welsh passport, if you like. Right. Right. And then i got to go before the king and all that bollocks, you know, and it costs like a thousand quid. Right. But, I, but when I get married, I get yeah. it done for free. I, I get right. it done in three months, so I'm just waiting okay. to get married. Okay, Where, cool. Do you think, am I missing something? Are you in Holland? Yeah, I'm in Holland, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. See, I think you're talking about COVID passports. See, I thought, just got onto that one, just annoying Peter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, COVID. Do you know what it is? I mean, I've, we've had this conversation several times on the, on the podcast now, but... COVID passports are no different to your old vaccine cards. Yeah, well, exactly. Of course they are, yeah. Mm. You know, even if you want to go to Africa, you've got to have a vaccine card. It's the same shit. I don't know why everybody's up in arms about it. It's yeah. just a vaccine card. That's all it is. If, you've had, if, if you met the requirements, just having the passport, the thing's no different. But No. You know, when, you, when you're a kid, when you're a baby, you have your measles. I mean, especially us when we were kids. I mean, at our age. You, know, yeah, you yeah. had your doctor's card and you had your measles stamp and you had your whatever stamp and you had your... I just think, think you had any arm stamp. The fact, you know? we've, got stage, the fact we've got to a stage that we get, they talk about having them is just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not a fucking COVID passport, it's a medical stamp. Yeah. Well, there's a <laughs> look at it, but yeah, it's just like, you know, it's just, it's just some people don't want to have certain things, so then that means they can't go. I know it's. it's not yeah, I know. I'm not saying I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm pro vax or anti, or anti vax. All I'm saying is the issue with the fucking COVID passport, it isn't a COVID passport. You know, mm -hmm. look at it logically, it's a fucking vaccination stamp. That's all it is. Whether you have the vaccination or not, you don't need to fucking carry one, then, do you? You know? 
think I, the thing is that it's, it's quite confusing the whole thing as well because some things thing habits aren't you don't know what you need you don't know what just it's, it's just it's mental I think yeah, it is. It's fucked up. <laughs> I know it's fucked up. But... Yeah. Oh, I didn't ask for anything. Well, I think this one is, but, but no, I, I don't know. I, I, I think if there's, if I'm ever going to be with any other young ladies, not that I'm married, that won't happen. But I would like to see, <laughs> I'd like to see their, you know, their medical history before. Yeah, that's that right. Yeah. Me, that would save me a lot of trouble in the past. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, Ruth? Sorry, Ruth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's within earshot, and it's I'm, I'm I'm in for a hell of an evening now, fellas. But anyway, I've got this thing right. Do you ever do you watch first dates? Do you guys watch first? I've dates? caught it. Yeah, it's 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 uncomfortable viewing. Right now, I've got an I've got a better idea for first dates actually. Yeah. Because they're obviously very meticulous. Oh, I can't say the word Metic oh, see, I meticulous. See, I get tongue tied. Meticulously matched, yeah. right? Yeah. No, they've got to be the Supposedly, right height, yeah. the right you, fucking weight, and do you, right. Do you think they're meticulously matched? I mean, I think they do it on purpose. No, I think, I think. No, you I do. think. Yeah, I really. But I've yeah. got a better idea now. I yeah. think because not everybody likes the same thing, right? Right. So there might be some really skinny guys that like really fat women, you know. Always. So why not make a first date with the really skinny guys with the fat fucking women? Yeah. Why not? Some guys like midgets, or some midgets like. Tall guys, you know. Where is I just this mix going? it all up a bit. Like. Where is this going? <laughs> <laughs> it would make for better viewing, wouldn't it, than just watching two fucking idiots having a meal in a yeah. first dates restaurant, you know? And you reckon naked attraction is bad? I think your are going to be worse than that. <laughs> no, if that if that was a pitch, it's a no from me. <laughs> I reckon it's a great idea anyway. I think, I think it's a terminology too. I think you need to you need to change your terminology on it. Maybe, yeah, you're not allowed to call them midgets anymore, are you? I yeah, to... yeah. Be challenged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't... Is that any better? No, I... well, Alan calls me vertically challenged only because I'm 5'8 and he's 6'2. I... Oh, fucking hell, I'm only 5'4. So I didn't go on there. <laughs> <laughs> so it's your demographic you're looking after then, Ted? <laughs> well, of course. <laughs> I, should, so wrong. I think it is just all person because I did catch something. I don't watch TV and something was on. Mm. Back and I could hear, I couldn't see the, mm. I think I must have had, I don't know. But I could hear the voicing and, and it was something about a small person who was an mm. American calling himself a small person. I think that might be what the, per, the proper terminology is. So if you want to go yeah. again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, without getting in trouble. Yeah. And and it, of course, next year it'll be different. So probably not worth yeah. it, eh? No, I know. Uh, I just thought it was a. Br I thought it was genius. I mean, yeah. you know, but, you know, we, just we, all, we always think our ideas are genius. Instead of, just... bad to other people. <laughs> Instead of just watching mundane telly, like make us yeah, spice yeah. it up a bit, you know. Yeah. Oh, what my like favorite David telly watches... would be. Well, I, well, I'd like it if they had some sort of electrical signal. Uh, which they'd receive in a chair, not the electric chair, but something like that. So if enough people hit enough of it, they get a tingling sensation, which tells them to move on. Yeah. <laughs> like a speed date then. Maybe. Yeah. You know, the David, shepherd's uh, trip, you might, that old Chester, yeah? Yeah, that yeah, way. yeah. Because David likes to watch some weird stuff, you know? David watches these, these like, half-naked programmes. Naked, attraction, naked attractions are amazing. That's embarrassing. That's that really embarrassing. I, I can't believe people actually go on national television naked to get confidence. Right. Mad. It's it's mad isn't it? But then think... the other one, the botched jobs is the same as well, isn't it? So oh. people that have had a, they got something wrong with their body. They, they've yeah. had it for 20 years. They're too embarrassed to go to their own doctor. So they go to a doctor on the TV and it gets announced to the entire Millions, world. Yeah. yeah. And then they're cured. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's fixed yeah. it. No, nah. 20, 20 years of no, I think, I think, surgery. It's like, it is a race to the bottom, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Just when you thought it was okay to go out. My, one of my best friends does um, some of that TV and he's very, very good at it. He's just come up with a new one called Ready to Mingle. Um, and he's doing very well out of it. Oh, so, yeah, really? Well, yeah. Hey, don't pitch in my idea, Mike, because I'll <laughs> get my lawyers on you. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's a point I would say. If you see that on TV, you know where he's got it from. <laughs> <laughs> what was it that that guy said to the interview? They said, um, 
he was in theatre. He said, I worked with the dwarf and asked her to go up on me. <laughs> <laughs> said no. <laughs> yeah, so this, is... this went south very quickly, Alan. It did, yeah. <laughs> it did. It's uh, always a bit of fun. Well, you know what they say, Pete? Things can only get better. Oh, that's no. <laughs> okay, that's a pound in the swear box. <laughs> Hey, you, you've made enough pounds out of that song, I bet. I have, yeah. The amount I've donated to charity would definitely um, at least buy them a new front door. <laughs> so what's your, what's your, let's go back to music for a little bit then. What's your favourite track from the album? I've had a listen, and I've got to be honest, it's, for me, it's Don't Let the Bastards Grind You Down. Ah. That's my favourite track on the album. That fine one. choice, sir. Um, I, I was on, re- hesitant whether to do it, but Alan was really um really supportive because um you know it's a phrase we all use and and now that we're not even aiming at radio you can just be quite liberated from you know thinking about oh is that gonna offend people or someone says oh you could call it don't let the haters get you down i was like okay okay but it's it doesn't have the same resonance and um i just think you know i've you know i've been i've been at the top of my game i've had the door slammed in my face i've been yesterday's man and i faced all of that i went through the mangle right and uh and so that, that one was sitting on the back burner for a long time. And when Alan and I got started working on Open Hearts, Open Minds, it was just one of those, those ones that kept coming back again and again and again. And when we finally found the sort of shape of it, it, was, it just sort of, it wrote itself, didn't it, Al? Yeah, no, it's brilliant. What, uh, what's your favourite then, Peter? Come on, what's your favourite on the album? Oh, don't. Uh, Universal Mother, of course, because um, I've been working on Universal Mother for a long time. And my mom passed away uh, pretty much within a month of me coming home there um, two years ago. And I, I finished writing it that weekend. And I, I don't know what, why, but, or why I was stuck for so long. Because as an adopted child, I had this sort of take on women folk anyway. And then I met my natural mother. So I had a second mother and then I was married. And now I'm married again and I've got my own kids. And I just see that it's just a, a, an homage it's to the, the unconditional love I've had from uh, women uh, since since I've been alive, and that's that's why I wrote that. And uh, it's really it's intensely personal, but somehow I know I've managed to make it work. It's it's talking about images I have in my my mind about being even seeing me as a child being held by the Christmas tree and and the times when you know the playground boys would have um, you know these, in Ireland they used to beat the hell out of you you know. Um, that's how that's how you grew up <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and that, it's all in there um but managed to make it work and then when <clears throat> alan played me something he he got something you got something remixed al and it had a big that was it me at midnight you got it remixed and the the guy did a big electric guitar break okay, Dan, yeah. and then i had this sort of section where it just came out of like the second chorus and went into a kind of groove and i was just really inspired to sort of play the hell out of my guitar in that moment and I know you were in the other room uh, talking to Callum. No, I was. And I was. I was downstairs. And I was. I was relieving myself in the loo, yeah. and I remember sitting there. So, and I, I could hear you. I think because it wasn't part of the plan. This electric guitar, and I can remember mm. what the, was that. I was just like Jesus, and I had to quickly uh, clean myself up and run in there. To, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah. And it's like, oh, I'm not sure. It's a bit too much. I was like, mm. no, no, it's not. Yeah, let's go with it. Um, and, he, and he actually he used he used real toilet paper. We we we'd exhausted all of the t- the uh, newspaper by then, <laughs> and the dock leaves. And, yeah, so the dock leaves. We get plenty out there. <laughs> anyway, and uh, so we we yeah we just sort of went with it. And then what we did was we took the lead break, and then being into house music, we just we we, we cut it all up and set it into samplers and played around with it. And a lot of the set sounds that are on there aren't available on effects pedals. So had a really good time doing that and it's probably the most intensely personal song i've done in, in years and i'm very very proud of it um yeah and i hope other people feel that too you weren't going to put on the album it was, we had a list of songs for the album weren't you? you were very reticent about putting an album but i felt even though it's one that i don't have any writing credits on or anything it just i just felt it was quite a beautiful song beautiful but a beautiful, beautiful song. thing man a beautiful thing and i and i just thought this is um you know, it's not about, you know, what I'll go, I'll go, I'll, I won't make out of this. It's about what's right for the album. And I just thought, and we had to work hard at it because you, you know, with you, you wanted it to sound away, didn't we? But it, I think it's got quite void feels to it in parts and stuff. And I just love, I think it sounds lovely. And I'm glad that you like, you feel comfortable with. Yeah. 
live because it is so intensely personal. So it's, um, it's something that I'm, I'm thinking when we do go live that it'll be one of those moments we can we can have that going with something like um, Star from the first album and you have that kind of intimate sort of area in the set. Oh, you can, because, well, we'll go off, have a fag, have a drink, but you just do your, do your um, no Gallagher moment. <laughs> As I used to call it, yeah. no, I, not no, not no Gallagher, no, no, but we it's call, Rory Gallagher. Call it yeah, no Rory Gallagher. Gallagher. That's more like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. <laughs> anyway, moving on. <laughs> What's your favorite, Al? Well, it's kind of changed all the time, but I'm still always Meet Me at Midnight. Always does it for me. It's the first yeah. track I did on the album, and I really loved yeah. it. And yes, sometimes I listen to some tracks on the album and you have little moments. I still listen to it on my own. That, well, with the missus, she actually really likes it, which is handy. And um, and I sometimes, like, things like Self Smabitha, I really quite like. It's quite, we, we had fun writing that and stuff. And it just it tells a real story. It's like, that's, to me, Self Smabitha, Bazaar is almost like Beatles moment because there's this real story there. There's a, a hell of a, a hint of irony in it. A hell of a <laughs> You know, and I just love the fact that tells a story and it's got a star and it, it's about the whole, it tells a story going on all day, basically. But, you know, <laughs> ironic as well, really. Cause it's, uh, what, what was that Judith Chalmers um, programme? Was, 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 was it called Holiday? Wish You Were Here. Holiday? Wish, oh, you, wish, you, were here. Yeah. Yeah. wish yeah. you Were Here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That might have played a part in it somewhere deep in my psyche. Because <laughs> if you listen to the sort of Spanish guitars and stuff, um, it sort of gone in there, and then I was I was actually um I'll tell you the story of Levine Maximin, our old backing singer. Um, now Levine was our Nubian princess. She's very 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 gorgeous, very black, but she was coming out of the water like um uh, Angela. Uh, you know the from the James Bond movies, and oh. we were in Ibiza, and we had a couple of hours off. I'd know between gigs, and she came out, and she, you know all the dreads went everywhere, and the water went everywhere, and she turned around to me and she says. I wish the Spanish would keep to their side of the island. <laughs> and I was like, Levine, this is their island. He's like, what? What? <laughs> it's like, it just went into, that was actually the begin beginning of it. Because the, the middle eight I had was, um, um, I wish the Spanish would stick to their side of the island. Um, and then maybe they wouldn't get so sick at the sight of us coming flooding in. Right. That was the beginning of it. But when I played it to Alan, it, just, it was called Postcards from Ibiza. She's, she's writing postcards in Ibiza, which it was, that was 25 years ago, that in her best longhand, wish you was here, <laughs> right? That's the show, and then Hot Bods, Hot Clubs. But um, when we got, we got, we got sort of cooking it and we got it on the go and we were like, no, nah, no, nah, it's gotta be, it's gotta be up to date. You remember Al? And we got it, it's gotta be selfies from Ibiza. We sort of like, you know, that's, it's even better because they're everyone's not even enjoying the experience. They're too busy seeing how they're framed in life. And I, something about that just just really appealed to us, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was just thinking about don't oh, fucking know. Don't let the bastards grind you down. Yeah. You should pitch it the Dutch radio because uh, they they allow swearing on Dutch radio anyway. Great. They well, say tell us they, they, say, they say wherever they fucking want. To be honest. <laughs> and then they they are uh, men and women of our own hearts. Yeah, so, yeah. So play it to whoever you want, man. We're we're cool with that. <laughs> Do you know what they do? Know? I'm trying to get the gist of the news at the moment over here because they had an election not so long ago and they voted the government, obviously the, the, the Prime Minister, if you like, got voted back in, right? Mm. And it seems to me now, it's all over the news at the moment, they're trying to make another parliament because they don't like the way the fucking this government's running things. So they're going to mm. have a second parliament because it's like, and I just can't get my head around it. It's like, I'm like, just because you don't agree with what's going on, because mm. your party lost, you know, and they've got obviously they've got their own part. It's like playing football, and there's some fucking fat kid saying, "Oh, it's my fucking football, and you're not playing with it," you know. Uh, or I'm going to start, start another match next door. Start my <laughs> yeah. own league. Yes, but that's then, what it is. Uh, some, I mean, look, something's in the water uh, on planet Earth because that's it, America's been torn apart by the same thing. Um, Britain, you know, when they didn't like the result on Brexit, uh, everyone was like, you know, no, but no matter what you think, it's like. I fucking hated that. I was so surprised at it, but it was the democratic decision. At the same time, if you don't accept it, you got to go around changing it politically, not yeah. forming new parties. But the shenanigans that the Tories pulled to push it through, I mean, yeah. an oven ready deal. Northern Ireland's been thrown under a bus. Where's the oven ready on that? That man's a pathological liar. Yeah, well, we know that. <laughs> we know, I mean, yeah. Have you seen the video that's been circulating about him? 
being Stefanovic or something his name is. He's, he's done a video. I should send you the links after this. They're just, they're on 37 million views already about every time Boris says a lie, he goes, no, actually, here's the statistics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw yeah, one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, have you seen that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. This, this is what you're up against. Yeah, this is what we're up against. Yeah. Because I never said that, and then he plays it to him. That's yeah, it. Seen it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's crazy. It's, it's, yeah. The world's gone upside down, man. It's, it's fucked up. It is, yeah. And it it's is. all to do with this entitlement bollocks as well. And the other thing, they had a they had a, a the Labour meeting today, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, that, that guy said crazy. he's going to borrow twelve billion pounds. And I was like, why do you need to borrow twelve billion pounds if the Conservatives are saving three hundred and fifty million pound a week for the NHS? Ah, uh, that's a joke. You know, that was promised for for fucking Brexit. Yeah, but no, but listen, there's the other thing. When you come off the gold standard, you can just print whatever money you want. So, yeah. but this is no magic money tree. Hey, look at that furlough scheme. Hey, look at. <laughs> Look at what I give my mates for some PPA. Hey, Mr. Barman, would you like a couple of hundred million? No problem. Yeah, that's what's Sort me out with good. some masks, yeah? It's, yeah, just the things, look, it's so corrupt. Until you take politics and you take the money that's in politics out. So you've got to get rid of corporate interests, as if it's Tories, and you've got to get rid of uh, the, the, the unions out of labor. You have to have parties which are independently funded by the nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you take out the rot. Yeah, yeah. But is that ever going to happen? I mean, uh, no, listen, uh, Peter for president, no fucking way. I would, I don't want to be in charge of <laughs> that, that shit show at all. And I'll, it, I mean, I, I lost interest in all parties probably in '97 when they took us to war in Iraq. I've just seen them as a blue team, red team, whatever team you want to put yeah, in. It is, yeah, is. They're, yeah. they're just they're because they, whatever agenda it is, is is electing them or pressing down on them or lobbying them. They, they're they're just on a, they're from somewhere else. You know, you're not yeah, witnessing yeah. democracy there. No. Anyway. No. Anyway, I love our new album. It's great. Let's, let's put <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, back to your new album. Your new album is fantastic. You can cut that bit out. <laughs> oh, no, we don't cut anything out. It's yeah, we don't, we don't we like to cut things out. We love to have a yeah. rant and a rave now and again. <laughs> well, every time we're on. <laughs> it makes for interesting listening, so. Yeah. Or, or ending careers. No. Well, no. we're just starting, so hopefully it won't end ours just yet. <laughs> you could start yours by ending ours. How about that? <laughs> well, you know what they say, Pete. Oh, he's done it again. <laughs> I'm two quid in now. That's two quid. <laughs> you know, if you do go back into, Bre in, into Brexit, if you get Brexit reversed or overturned, if you like, yeah, you will have to get rid of the pound. You know that, don't you? Well, I've been saying this to a lot of my friends who... Your sovereignty's gone. No, I agree. But listen, don't forget that the generation that, that swung that a certain way, they will, you know, they're, sadly, they're going to pass on at some point. The kids want unification on the whole, it seems, I would think. And as they gradually swing towards that and it rejoins you, you'll do so properly next time. You won't be uh, um, hesitant or be the one that sits in the European Parliament going no all the time. Yeah. You'll be properly dedicated to being a European. And that's that's probably all. Well, I can't even look into crystal ball to say that, but that would be my wish. So let's let's see what happens. Let's yeah. see what happens. I think you're absolutely right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's got definitely, that's definitely what's going to happen. So. Mm. Mm. Not that I have a crystal ball either, but uh, and it'll probably happen after I'm fucking dead. So <laughs> it might be in our lifetime. You never know. You think? I don't know. Yes, definitely. Do you think yeah. 10 years? Yeah. Once, once we've got, once all those slavering, I won't call them gammons, but you know, I've, yeah, had, yeah. I've, had, I've all passed on and, and are too lazy to vote again, you know, and the kids have got the word way, like Pete says, I think mm. there's another reference. Who knows? I can't mm. see success, put it that way. You never, yeah. know. you could all be wrong. It might be a right, a resounding success. Not yeah, going yeah. well at the moment, but you know, you never know. The only thing that's go you've got good going for that is, is the pound and the euro is almost one for one, you know. Mm. When it happened here in Holland in 2001, it changed over. The guilder and the, and the euro were, were miles apart, you know what I mean? Mm. And it pretty much teamed everything together and it's like everybody in Holland got raped by the, by the euro right. changeover. It's shocking. Yeah. Mm. I've done that note. <laughs> So we'll go. We'll let you look. We'll let you guys go and uh, cut your oh. wrists. <laughs> oh, terrible, terrible conversation we're on now. <laughs> well, it's nice to talk about everything. You know, that's why we call just chops in. So yeah, yeah. Pete's gone quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Has he frozen? Oh no, um, he's frozen. <laughs> He's, 
he's, he's reaching for the off button that he's got frozen. <laughs> <laughs> See, you know, you know when you're having an awkward conversation on the old mobiles, the ones that were like the bricks. You remember, you could just undo the aerial. That's it. <laughs> and he would crack up. You say, "I'm going into a tunnel." <laughs> well, you could go back even before then and just let your two pence run out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is hilarious. We should do this every every month at least. <laughs> Yeah, you can always come back here, all right? It's good. Well, we'll put the world to rights the next time, won't we? We will. Definitely. Especially if you write another album in the meantime. In the, which is it's not possible. Is that a challenge? Can be. <laughs> all right, then, guys, we're going to let you go because I know you've got another interview to do. I doubt if it'll be as much fun as this one, but... Uh, right, well, I don't know. I can, I'm, any more laughter, I'll, I'll cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck with it. Yeah, yeah we'll make sure we share all your socials as well and yes please do and everywhere for people to be able to go on and buy your records and uh, right. see these yeah, yeah. I put and them all for in them the to be able to go and listen to it is great so that's cool well, well, you haven't got streaming have you we don't do streaming of our music now okay where can people listen to it then uh, on a band camp you can listen to it before buying anyway it's all playable three times to anyone so you can listen to it through so Ah, oh, right, okay. I wasn't sure if that was allowed out or not because I had it through in the press pack. But... I listened to it three times before having to purchase. So that's okay. the, and all the way through. So they, they always sing that. That's your three chances. You've got three chances to listen. If you want to buy it, buy it. If you don't, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Give me men three chances back. <laughs> three strikes in your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> all right, then, guys, like I said, good luck with it. Yeah, brilliant. And. Uh, <laughs> Good luck with trying to put your tour together next year. Yeah, oh, God, God. we'll uh, we'll see you over here. Yeah, yeah, and, cool. And I hope you come back and speak to us soon. We haven't put you off too much. We don't want to be fun. All right, guys. All right. Thanks a lot. Three, two, one.